YouTube. We have something special for you today. Something amazing. It's in a box. This one. I'm intentionally opening it so you can't see what's in there. Except you can see now. Dang it! And the thumbnail. Just We're gonna open this thing. Don't read anything. Don't, don't read, read the it. title or look at the don't picture. Don't read those words. Just put a different picture someday. Just yeah, we should. Sure like an e-bike. That would be hilarious. I'm <laughs> sure that would be really good. Really good for the algorithm. Okay, guys, in case you were wondering, this is one of my favorite planes. One of. One We've of. talked about this. Yes. One of. Oh, yeah, it's the Viper Jet 70 millimeter Ooh. version something more than one. Yes. I like okay. The yeah. Yeah, it looks like a 90, but it's a 70. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, this is an early release, so please forgive the packaging if it's less than perfect. This was a product development <laughs> offering that's been tested. And that way, when you guys go to order, you don't have one less airplane to order. Okay, so we're just gonna lay this out of the way. A Viper 70 millimeter, a couple of key critical points that I want you to know. This thing has some squishy tires, pay attention. It has spring-loaded oleos, amazing. It has the bigger, more powerful, more robust EDF powered or brushless motor. It still runs on 6S before. Success compatible, 1900 KV motor with 85 amp smart light ESC, which means thrust reverse. Mm -hmm. And it's not gonna fail right when you need to pull out. It's good. Because that can cause lots of, am I having problems? It might problems? be taped. No, it's not. There's a piece of tape there, but I don't think it's actually taped. Oh, okay. So basically those are the big ticket items that you need to know. They call this a skill level two. It's honestly as a bind and fly basic meaning that you don't have to buy a receiver. So you may notice that this is a little bit more expensive than some of the competitive offerings, but that's because you get the receiver included rather than a plug and play. Goodness gracious. What are you doing? There it is. There. All right. Okay, so we have the lid off. We've gotten the first step it's down. It's been two and a half minutes. 400 steps left. <laughs> so we're super excited for this. Um, this these have been great planes. Uh, we love the Viper pretty much all forms. We've done a lot of Vipers, a few for competitive companies, a few for Horizon, and this is the E-Flight offering, so you know it's probably gonna be the premium offering, okay? And so make no mistake, looks like we have a nut and bolt sack with very few nuts and bolts. My favorite. Yes. Honey, if you wanna play with that, go yes. ahead. Yes, sure. Oh, yes. This looks so good. Oh, the yellow, I love this orange. Yeah. I was afraid that was gonna look like the red from before because the box does almost look like a sun-washed red. Oh. Meaning like it's an old picture that's like wet, washed Faded out. Faded kind no, of. No, it's just because this is orange. Yeah. Okay, so 07 Viper, I don't know what that means. There's some significance, I'm sure. We've got the little winglets on there, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Love the winglets. Oh, also just another point of contention between this and maybe another current offering would be this one is not going to blend into the gray skies of fall yeah when mother nature Sad. starts to set your evening clock earlier okay so white will show up a little bit better now you do have gray on the bottom but other competitive offerings uh with an all gray body this will not come on yours guys that's an extra upgrade we got that blue tape mm -hmm. amazing different tape on yours. elevator okay so we'll put that there by the way, if you haven't ever experienced the Viper, one of the best planes you're gonna fly, super fun. She will slip out from under you on final if you're, if you're not careful, okay? So skill level two is true. This thing is uh, a really good flying plane. It's also not super hard to fly. I am not going to give advice like it's the best first EDF. I do not think that's true. There are others that will say that to sell more. We want to sell planes to the right people at the right time for the right reasons, because really that helps to bolster the hobby and get people in at the right time. Because if you get the plane at the wrong time for the wrong reasons, you're gonna end up crashing that said plane. And that's notwithstanding trees that pop out from nowhere after 40 years of growing. Mm -hmm. But they did fold my manual. Yours might not be. 
Just kidding. I'll, got, I'll pick that up in a minute. You got a manual. <laughs> I threw it on the ground. I know. It is nice. We did get a manual. I just figured we would show a very upset Brian Phillips RC pertaining to folded manuals because it does make me annoyed. They literally put it in a slot. <laughs> it was like a it's little like, tiny what pocket. What are you doing? What are you, what are you, well, you can't tape it on the back side of these because this has the open style yeah, box, it's, guys. Uh, yeah. See, so it is, at least you got that. You know, I've always thought if you're going to have a manual, just tell them to put the manual on top because then in the packaging assembly line, you'd be like, hey, that looks like a nice little tip on there. I don't think they changed that, but it does look nice. I haven't, I haven't actually touched that one for so time, for some time. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, Pilot looks nice. Kind of looks like he might have a little jaundice going on. He should... Uh, a little yellow. Never seen a pilot that has such a terrible tan also. <laughs> You know, but yellow pilots, yeah, you gotta, gotta deal with it. Okay, so continuing to unpackage. Um, okay, so just, you know, as you can see, just a very good packaging. Never had a problem with that on a, an e-flight offering. I think we had one plane that had a broken, damaged nose cone or something. It was on a Timber 1.5, mm -hmm. like the very first one. Yeah. And it was super minor, it was like the nose, didn't exist and it had like the motor mount and it poked the end of the box or something, yeah. but it was fine. Or something with the wing, I can't remember. It's been so long. Beautiful ventral fins. They are glued on, okay. ESC, or excuse me, the um, access to the EDF is easy. And look at that beauty right there. Gorgeous. Avian 85 amp ESC right there. That is gonna prove to us that we're gonna get our thrust reversed. And by the way, I just wanna talk for a second about piece count. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Is that all? Seven. Is that it? If you include the manual. Wow. That is phenomenal. That is. Um, okay, so we are up against a bit of a tight deadline on this being a new release. And so we're gonna hopefully be able to fly it. It's a little bit dark right now a to fly. Bit. Yep. So we're gonna obviously have to wait until tomorrow. So I'm just, repacking my box like I always do. If you guys ever wondered what we do with these boxes, um, because we have a lot of them, we have a special formula for making some poor man's asphalt. And if you've ever seen us do a car video, you've seen us drive on top of it or near it. Yeah. And that's what happens to all this beautiful stuff. It's Super very environmentally looking. friendly um, recycling system. Yes, Let's just go with recycling. There's not any black smoke involved at all. None. Um, okay, so as you can see, piece count very low. We're gonna dig into this build, but I'm gonna grab a plane stand. And the plane stand is optional, but it does make it a little easier on your back if you're old like me. Yes. Okay, so we have a plane stand. These things got adjusted for the last plane, which was huge. Yes. This one's not huge. And that's one thing I wanna talk about right now. The size of this jet makes it amazing for transport. Low wing, okay? Tail's not especially huge. Strong canopy, easy to transport. The worst part of it is the winglets, okay? So that being said, definitely manageable, not a big deal. I'm thinking about this. Do I wanna put on the main, the main wing first or the tail sections first? I think we're gonna go tail sections this so time. So we usually do tails first. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to lay down here. Okay. Now, retracts are awesome on this plane. We should have uh, some pretty good time showing that here in a minute or two. And just to be clear, they are new upgraded. Uh, the oleos are the same as the competitive offering, but the tires are soft. So somebody listen to Brian Phillips RC. This poor, lowly voice in the hobby. <laughs> All right, here it is. Us. It was just us. We're the only ones that complain about squishy tires. I mean, I like a squishy pair myself. But you don't even know that. I do. You're probably gonna need like a screwdriver. Listen. Not there yet. Not there yet. Okay. I'm just gonna plug these things in. These are the split elevators. So the split elevators go out to the tail. Oh, by the way, I didn't, I, sometimes I like show how strong this stuff is. Looks like it's reasonably strong. Nothing to write home about, nothing crazy heavy duty. There is a reinforcement in here and a reinforcement in here, okay? So, but again, I've never had an issue with that on my Vipers in the past, and I assume you guys probably haven't. Um, earlier, what I was saying is that the thing will slip out from un under you on final. Our final approach sometimes calls for a late base leg turn, and 
basically, and, and I might be using wrong terminology. If I am, I apologize. I don't mean to offend real full scale pilots, uh, but the truth is um, I only play one on YouTube and pretend. You don't even pretend, I don't even pretend to be, that on, to be that on YouTube. Right. That's sorry, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn. There you oh go. wait, was that was that the one? We did actually. We did actually. This was a long time ago, but still, you know, we did. Yeah. That one time. Yeah. So brown to brown, brown to brown, as you can see, mm -hmm. brown, brown. Okay. We're just going to stuff these kind of in this general vicinity, except that's not going to work. So what I'm going to have to do is I'll have to grab one of these wires. The cable management in this particular plane is maybe leaves just a little bit to be desired. Uh, if I recall, which one are we trying to grab? Elevators, guys? There's a bit of a mess in here. Like a whole chunk going to the back. Goodness gracious. I see rudder back there. Oh, it's going through the ferrite core. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. It's going through the ferrite core, that's why. Okay, so we've got a brown. Oh, I just don't want it to, that's the rudder. This is the rudder, folks, okay? Then this must be a Y cable? Yeah, but the Y cable splits up here, which is nice. So if you decided you want to do a Televon configuration at some point, then you can, you know, do that later. Oh, by the way, if you have like one of the really, really early versions of the uh, Viper, there was a time when it came with a 636, an Air 636. They've been on 631s for some time. That's good because you're going to get packed. Uh, I believe you get packed telemetry because of the smart ESC. You also get thrust reverse. That works. And I gotta say, I've run into a bit of a problem with the competitive offering and other recent releases from competitive offerings where when I turn on my thrust reverse, it does not come on and the plane continues to careen that direction <laughs> with now full throttle. But then at some point after you've given up with your attempt to land and you're doing your go around, you flip the switch and then all of a sudden, boom! Yeah. Oops, it's very frustrating. Okay, now there's two screw holes here, okay. and then there's two pass-throughs here. So you're gonna put two screws into this to hold it down, but you it's it's probably gonna be a little easier to put these two in first, don't you think? Because then there'll be a third yeah, up here. Yeah, I'm guessing so. Yeah, let's do that first. Yep. Okay, so where did the nut and bolt sack go? Oh, it's right there under the wing, right under the... Yes, right here. Yep. Okay, so two millimeters, I'm assuming, I'll grab two and 1.5 and just double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's two millimeters. A lot of these planes are using two millimeter drives now. These hex drives are amazing. We uh, have really good luck with that. Yeah, that's gonna be a two millimeter as noted by this marking here. So we'll throw these in real quick. If you guys are new to Brian Phillips RC, what we do here is we unbox, build, and radio set up these planes. We hopefully get you up in the air. If you're a newer pilot, you could be flying this plane, okay? So don't be scared off by it, but I'm also not gonna sit here and make a truth claim that this is a beginner plane because I don't really think it is. Mm -mm. Now, Horizon might kind of hold to that position because it is an easier to fly jet than some other offerings, but boy, I tell you what, Habu STS, if you're brand new, go with it before you know and you wanna take the plunge for something like this NX-10, mm -hmm. which by the way, I am aggressively pushing the NX-10 now over the NX-8. The NX-8 is great. If you can't afford the NX-10, get the eight. If you just don't get the six, get the 10. You're chasing good money after bad on a six right now. Although you can fly this on the NX-6 and there is only one trade-off and that is thrust reverse or safe. Which one do you want? Okay, because you need all those channels, eight channels to do the full suite of controls. So keep that in mind. And the reason we're pushing the 10 is because we have had a number of different planes with different wing types that demand the additional channels. And we here at Brian Phillips RC, that's including the camera crew, Megan, my wife, uh, supportive, wonderful person that she is. We do care about you. We do care about your success. And we do care about sales for these companies because we do work with them and they are Merkin companies, some of them, at least this one, selling Chinese things. And by the way, if you guys hadn't considered that, you got to remember something. If you're ever upset about the Chinese um, making this particular product and then it being sold, just remember there are many Americans that are making money on these planes that mm -hmm. are made overseas. Okay, just like coffee makers, just like kids' toys, just like a millions of different products that we buy every single day. So yes, it'd be cool if you could make it in America and you could employ somebody saying. But the truth is, 
if you can find an American company that's willing to build these, please contact us because I would love to liaison a relationship between you and Horizon and any other company that would be willing to do business with them, okay? Because there are few and far between and pretty much all of them have gone out of business bankrupt because mm -hmm. American labor is too expensive to make this an affordable hobby to the average American consumer, which is a disappointing but true reality, mm -hmm. okay? Don't hate the messenger. There is a bug I'm trying to get it. Did we harvest some vegetables? We did. Thank you. I don't, want the, I don't want the audience to think we live in like some sort of a like no, a bug. Our kids thing. picked eight pounds of cherry tomatoes yesterday. Eight pounds. Good Lord. I don't and even like, like cherry tomatoes. 20 pounds of cucumbers. It was a little ridiculous. So you guys can see this. This is now going to be the fifth screw just, so you know, but yeah, a little bit ridiculous. If you see a fruit fly or two, yeah, sorry. don't worry. It's the cherry tomatoes. It's not that bad. If you want to help support us to pay for our bug guide, <laughs> just uh, follow one of the links down below. You can buy one of these plants for your own. Also, by the way, wow. what we do on this channel is super easy, Bill. Yeah. Guys, this is going to be super easy. The worst part of this is going to be cable management, I guarantee you. Okay? All right, so now we can flip this over. It is kind of nice to have the canopy on, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it off. This uh, sticker is unique to ours. Basically, it just has to do with the elimination uh, between different test samples that the product development guys work through. And again, just to be clear, when we get these early releases, um, it's not coming off the docket. It's not one you would have been able to purchase. So don't worry. We're not taking from the inventory that you guys could buy. And that's an important thing. We're happy that they're doing it that way right now, because as long as this thing flies and it's got the same features that you're expecting, then that keeps you guys available. We love that you can buy planes that we review right away because we really like that. Now, oh, ho, 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 ho. That's like super soft. Well, I'm they loving are squishy. it. They're real squishy, nice. but they still look good. Mm -hmm. So this one here. Oh yeah. Let's touch squishier. that thing. So guys, just wow. to be clear, we nice. put low brown low bounce Dubro tires on our last Viper Jet and it needed them because that thing would bounce. Do you remember that? We did? Yeah, we did. Hmm. I think we did. I thought I maybe I'm misremembering. I, if you remember that, yeah, it's <clears> probably true. I don't remember things often. <laughs> Anniversaries, birthdays, things that you told me to remember. Right. But I do remember that crap. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. If you guys know me in real life, then you would understand that comment. Oh, okay. I need to, hold on a sec. I need to do a little surgery real quick. If, if you stick your hand in this prop and get it cut off or an, another appenditure that's long enough to reach inside, Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, don't do that, no, please. No. It would be better that you don't. Yeah. Okay. Don't send pictures if you do. No, you've been warned. All right. So that being said, uh, we have an, <clears throat> excuse me, an EC5. Okay. We have an IC5 rather, not an EC5. My apologies. Uh, EC5 is compatible with this as well as IC5. And uh, so if you have the blue end on your e-flight packs for instance you should be able to use that now one thing i i'm trying to remember it's been a while since we built this so there's this pass-through hole right there i don't know if you can show them it's a little tricky to get the y cables through and so one suggestion i have is if you have access to a pair of forceps now i understand you may not all have forceps but forceps are the name of the game if you haven't bought some forceps you should buy these things. I don't even know if we have links to them, but we do, we do have a supply link, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, they're there. Okay, they're probably not the same ones I have. These ones are extra crappy, okay? In fact, we should buy those because there's like a bunch in that kit. Really? Yeah, yeah, these are just two. Now, one thing uh, to pay attention to when you're buying a pair of forceps is the pivot point. You want to be as far out forward as you can. For what we do, you don't usually need a big bite point like this. This is like a tool shop brand from Menards. If you guys have Menards in your area, I mean, I have been nerds in my area, but the store. If you're um, in the Midwest. In the yeah. Midwest, you know what I'm talking about. It's like the Home Depot of the Midwest, Home Depot and Lowe's. So these things clamp down. And if your, bite, if your pivot points down here, then you actually can pass them into a tighter spot whilst opening the jaws, okay? Mm -hmm. You can also get these things that come back and they have like a scissor operation where they go back and forth twice. It's really cool. And you can reach way deep into cavities. Um, okay, so why are we reaching into cavities? Well, you have to pull the wires through. 
Well, I mean, we do other stuff too. But in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we are gonna pull the wires through. Exactly, camera crew. Okay, so you see this? The flap wire is the wire I'm concerning myself with now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, I've got straight tips and I have bent tips. I always end up with the bent tips, always mm -hmm. easier to use. So I'm gonna just click one click here and I'm just gonna like literally drop this through like that. Okay, I'm gonna like rest it in there. Then I'm gonna flip this plane back over and I'm gonna open those, okay? Now, and I have two separate wires, which means there's a Y cable and I can either get the Y cable off, okay? See, this is the gear. So gear need to go out as well. So it really doesn't matter which one you grab. Oh, why is, hold on, I'm, I'm just looking for a second. I got ailerons here. It's a stupid ferrite core. Ugh. I know I probably should not just take, take that off like I normally would, um, but I'm really tempted to do it. Okay, here's an aileron and that's on a Y cable. Here's an aileron. Oh, what the heck is going on there? That needs to pass through, doesn't it? But doesn't that need to be plugged in? Probably. Yeah, that's gonna have to get plugged in. But I think what's going on is just all of these are gonna have to go through. So I'm gonna cable manage for a minute, guys. Okay, so here's our ailerons. So you see what I did was when I passed that through, it just gives me a really easy way to pull that cable through. See what just happened? Okay. Now I'm just gonna pass this back through. And see, it's like, oh, it's just like clockwork. I could have grabbed both at the same time, but I'm not that smart. So you're actually going to pull them out through the bottom instead of trying yeah. to shove those up through the top. Yeah, because it, like you're not going to be able to get them very easy because like mm -hmm. how the heck are you going to plug them together? Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So, and continuing on, what the hey? We have a yellow. Oh, that's a, now just to be clear, this is not like the Predator ESCs that we see in the competitive offering. This is a programming cable. It is different. Okay because we use serial communications between our receiver and our ESC in this application because we have smart technology that runs through it. A river runs through it of smart technology, okay? Smart technology is the superior offering and it's arguably better for many different reasons. Okay, so we have AS3X only bind plug. I'm just gonna go ahead and just jank that right out of there and just, I'm gonna use this push button You guys hear that click? Mm -hmm. That's a push button. So I don't need that, but it's there if you need it, okay? Thank you, Horizon, for putting that in there for all seven people that needed it. All right, so now I'm gonna pass these back up here. And this actually, this is working pretty good. This is a pretty awesome solution. Can't believe I never thought of it before. That's one thing that's nice about having been doing this for a while now is we have had a chance to fail miserably so many times that uh, we're starting to get pretty good at this. It's every, only taken us a decade. Every once in a while we Every once in a while it out. we figure it out, okay? By the way, we've been married for a long time too, so we figured out how to communicate and never have arguments. Never, ever. No, especially not before we film. <laughs> right before we right, film. Right, it's never, it never right happens. before we film. <sighs> don't mind the holes in the wall from the throwing of things. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. If you, long, if you have been married, months, then you will we'll appreciate what we just said. <clears throat> if not, forget it. Okay, <laughs> see this? This one's going downstairs, okay? To the nose gear, obviously. Okay. So this needs to plug into the receiver. So we need the brown to go back. And this is pretty dang short. So I think the easier way is gonna be to pass this through so we can land our cables. I'm just gonna pass, uh, that apparatus it really doesn't have to. I'm torn on this one. This one's kind of tough, okay? I'm gonna take those both together. I'm gonna just hold them. I don't wanna clip this because I'll probably break them. But you kind of see my dilemma is like, that's still pretty dang short. Gosh, I wish I would've used a little bit longer cable there. That's all right, whatever. It's not that big a deal, guys. I don't want anybody that, you know, to be sensitive about my concerns. Overly sensitive. That will be saved for later. <laughs> Camp crew is looking at me with the devil eyes. What's that? She is too. She's like, don't say it. Don't say it, you don't say it, Brian. Guys, if you're new to Brian Phillips RC and you don't understand all these inside jokes, just stick around for a little while. You will eventually understand them. Mm -hmm. I promise you. And the truth is here on YouTube, we've been doing this so long. I think we're, we're something like, I don't know, 55 million views or some odd number like that. 
and yet YouTube is still concerned that they're not getting enough money from us. So if you wanna thank YouTube, I'm gonna give you a special way to do it. It's super easy. All you need to do is scroll down into the video description and click the link and you can buy one of these amazing planes for yourself. And then we'll get small commissions from the company that sells them, which in this case is E-Flight, Horizon Hobby. So that also helps to facilitate paying to run our channel. And our channel consists of doing big giant projects on our property right now and making almost no money because we spend it all. Is that pretty much, did I cover the topic <laughs> pretty, much. pretty accurately? Yeah. So anyway, our latest project is building a pond. So because this is a new release and you'll be watching for years, you're probably gonna think to yourself, I, and I still get this, I, sorry, I had to cut it off. You know why? Because it was using up like a half inch of the wire oh. and it wouldn't allow them to separate and go opposite directions, okay? So that is why I did that. You may have to do the same thing. I kind of doubt you will, but everything's plugged in now. I'm just, this cable management's easier at this stage. So I'm just taking advantage of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, cable management's always a pain. Nobody ever wants to do it, including me. And, and if you're old, it's easier to do when you're closer to the plane. Yeah, seriously. Because otherwise your back is going to like, it's going to pay dividends. You are making yourself sound really old. I know. What, dividends? No, your back. Dividends, whippersnappers. If you're old, don't worry, we're not being ageists. We just are aged. <sighs> we're not ageists. Yes. We're just old, like you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when we started this, we weren't as old. No. But now we're not we even are. close. But still, we were, I mean, we weren't like young. Like, young couple builds a cabin in where was that? Ohio. And I'm like, wait, hold on, pump the brakes. You weren't young when you started. <laughs> Well, we just had our first baby. We're 40. Do you remember that channel? We did have less kids when we started this too. We, we have four kids, guys. And let me tell you something. It's not that much work. For you. <laughs> I can always say that on camera. Because I know you can't murder me on <laughs> camera. <sighs> we just won't publish sleep. the murdering. <laughs> You start seeing a lot of reruns. Yes. You'll, yeah. <laughs> then you'll know that I finally put her over the edge. So guys, if you're married with children, <laughs> welcome to Brian Phillips RC. This is what happens. Hey Brian, hurry up with that plane, man. I really want to see how it turns out and you're taking forever. I, yeah, I know. I know, Mr. Jailbird, it's okay. We get to see him in a couple of weeks. Hey Brian, the radio setup, are you done with it yet? Hurry up with the radio setup. I really need to know which channel to put the rudder on. Just scroll over to the right with your scroll thing. You'll know. Oh, by the way, if you want to leave comments and questions, please do so down in the comments section. If you're watching on a smart TV, just whip out your phone and do it while you watch. Don't forget to smash the like button. It helps us to compete against the people that do shorts incessantly. I really wish this stupid rudder thing was under there, man. Come on, man. Yeah, I gotta go under. Do you see what I'm concerned under about? Under where? Look, here's the antenna. Now, I am definitely not oh, a fan of this. Oh, you want under the antenna. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna probably redo that. Okay, sorry guys, I, did, I missed this before I stuffed it in the hole. Sometimes we get excited when we have that opportunity. Now, we're just gonna pass this under right here. Ooh, we need to be careful. I don't understand why people like watching you do this. They're just, all they're looking at is the back of your hand. I know, I know, it's terrible. But at the same time, for whatever reason, people are like, wow, man, those wires look so good, Brian. I just wish you could have done it in one-tenth the time. Me in too. super time-lapse. Yeah, believe me, me three. <laughs> so, guys, if you're watching and you're thinking to yourself, Brian, I don't need to see you do surgery on your plane with those forceps, but they are kind of nice. Oh, if I haven't sold you on forceps yet, just wait longer because we're probably going to need them in a minute when we do the wing. Um, and, and honestly, admittedly, the F-16 is actually even worse <laughs> than this. The F-16-70, okay? And uh, you can see what I'm talking about. Like, this antenna just makes me nerve-wracked. You see, my concern is right here, this vulnerability here. So I mean, I, now, if you well, pinch this on your antenna, you can damage it. So you need to be super, super gentle. But where are you gonna go with it that's I'm better. just pulling it down so that there's more slack. Oh. Because it's going through this clear tube here, Yeah. okay? 
So the other thing is I really like the tube. That's nice. See this tube guys? Makes it super easy. But all I'm doing is I'm basically putting this in a spot where I can relax the cable so that there is a bit of a strain relief on that connection point. I wish that would exit in a different spot in this application. So the 631 has a top pin connection strategy and the 630 has an end pin strategy. So there might be a time and place for that in the future. But when we get the 631, we get that external antenna. And so, you know, like Horizon has said, or E-Flight Spectrum in this case, has said that the range is the same on the 830 as it is on the 831. 630 and 631. 631, I am sorry, I'm speaking out of my butt here, it looks like. The 631 and the 630 are the same one, except one has end pins and an internal, that'd be the 630. And the 631 has top pins. So it just depends on what direction your wires are coming from. If you did end pins on here, I wonder if it would, it, it would get in the way and interfere with your ability to attach the wing. But look how much better that looks already. Yeah. I mean, it, it is considerably better. Um, and you know, to be honest with you, it wasn't too hard. It's just a little bit of fiddling around. Ooh, by the way, strong strap. I think on this one, the product development guys probably put the Velcro onto their battery. And so you're gonna get a piece of Velcro, so we might as well do this before we flip this over. Shelf liner is the name of the game. I'm gonna grab some Velcro from a previous install. I just have this bag of things because I don't ever throw anything away. Mm -hmm. My wife loves that feature My about favorite. Ryan Phillips. It's like, it's like, we save so much money on those screws, we'll never have to buy. It was a big selling point. I'm All 10,000 extra screws from every plane you've ever owned. It's wonderful. <laughs> she says it just like that. All crazy eyed, <laughs> it scares me every time. Okay, this is the soft side, it sticks to the sticky side, okay? It looks, holy cow, it's like that literally came out of one of these, that's awesome. I mean, it's probably like, that's the size that they come out. Maybe, Okay. It's possible. All right, so shelf liner would go in a shelf like this. But See how annoying that is? Somebody took all my shelf liners. So I wonder who that was. You should really get after that. those kids and take those back. So what, what you would normally do with shelf liner is you would, you would take it and you would stick this underneath this this thing and it would stop it from sliding. Yes. Okay. But not listen. This is this is an early release. This is serious company business, right? No, it's not. It's just Brian reviewing this plane. Okay, so you see this? I'm gonna stick that down, guys. Here, can I close this now? Do we need? Why? Do we need to see our Are you embarrassed drawers? of our of Juanita? Juanita. <laughs> Juanita. It's Oneida. Okay, I'm just making sure you actually know that. I used to call him Juanita constantly, and my wife was only slightly embarrassed of me. Kids, get Juanita out of the drawer. Yeah, quick, we're eating dinner. Yeah, get Juanita. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Kids pretty much exactly what would happen. Juanita. If your name is Juanita, I apologize in advance, Oneida. That is a name brand. We probably just like pop. It's going to be a copyright strike yeah. number 75. Brian Phillips RC. That's right. I'm sure they worry about selling lots of silverware on RC airplane channels. Listen, they don't. If you're they buying. Have, listen, they have millions of channels to review. But I mean, there's like more airtime on our channel than like 17 That's other true. channels. So in case you guys were wondering, we do have like 1800 plus videos. So if you're wondering like, where can I get more of this amazing footage? <laughs> right here on Brian Phillips RC. All you have to do is click on my little face picture. You know, the picture of the kid that looks like he's, you know, at least 10 years younger than I do now without a beard. And I've got some Bose headset on. I was flying an airplane with my dad. It was awesome. And when I say I was flying it, I meant I was riding in the passenger seat, passenger seat of the airplane. It was cool. But anyway, that's the picture. You click on that, it'll bring us to our channel. You can search there, and then you won't be navigating away from YouTube because God forbid they would lose out on 30 cents worth of income. It would be bad because they're really tight on cash these days. <laughs> um, but that being said, when you click on that, you can search our entire channel in that search because that mm -hmm. search is just for our channel. You can also go to brianphillipsrc.com and we have everything laid out there by manufacturer, by you know hobby shop, whoever we're working with, distributor. And it's a really easy way to find the videos because if you're like, hey, I saw that plane in the background, I saw this plane or I'd seen you know, something a while back and I can't remember it. Do you well, want me to go over there so I can help you? Mm, no, 
Okay. But I'm just saying, you can find what you need to find, okay? So the gear are gonna plug in here, okay? Brown is down. You can see I don't have much, to, yeah, I'm just wondering. I don't have much to work with is the problem. I know. I can... Okay, so the camera crew is gonna help me. She's gonna hold the edge of the wing, okay? We have to kind of hold it like this, so it's gonna make it hard to see, so just hold it right there, steady. Okay. Up just a hair, there we go, okay, good job. I just don't want these to drop back in. Yeah. Okay. So if you're searching on Brian Phillips RC, you'll be able to find what you want for the other plane that's like in the background that makes you excited. And uh, I remember Peter, and I'm gonna say his last name, Scriptal, had, he had this airliner that was in the background of one of his videos. He had built this like 90 millimeter EDF with flight test years ago. And he used to always see that and it just made me drool every time I saw one of his videos. Hold it up just a little bit more. There you go. And uh, anyway, so we try our best not to, you know, advertise, if you will, planes that you can't buy, <laughs> except we kind of did that a long time ago. We had this like discontinued special we would run. Mm -hmm. And uh, cause I'd buy, I, I remember I bought the Apache. You remember the Apache mm -hmm. from Blade? Awesome helicopter, scale model. Terrible to get the battery in that sucker, um, which is not uncommon in certain scale batteries or scale helicopter platforms. But anyway, what I'm getting at is I always wanna be able to see if I can find more information about particular planes that I see in the background, for instance, like what was in the background on Peter's channel. By the way, Peter has an awesome channel. He's got many millions of subscribers. So we're just like a little tiny, teeny tiny drip in the bucket. Okay, compared to his channel. Okay, so he's bigger than flight test now, which wow. is crazy. Okay, so you guys see this? Cable management's not perfect. In fact, I'm gonna redo this aileron real quick. Oh, this aileron's kind of screwy, so I'll just use that one first. It'll be easier to disconnect. If you ever get one that's broken like this or like weak, weakened like this, you, you won't believe me until I show you, but if you'd take a lighter, you can probably restore that. In fact, we're gonna try, just because my camera crew has her hands full of things, <laughs> and so she's kind of captive audience. So remember, fire is dangerous, kids. Hey, Brian, you ready for the radio setup yet? Soon. If this melts, how hilarious would that be? Yeah, it's not, not working the way I was hoping. I just heated it up. Oh, that's really toasty, Brian. Oh, it hurts my fingers. I'm cooling it. Cool, cooling it. Look at that. See, now it's relaxed. Is it better? Yeah, it's better. What? Okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it on camera in front of millions of viewers. That's a joke, guys. If we get millions of views on this, I will be very happy. Okay, now I just have to ram it in the hole. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, trimming sides. Uh, yep. I mean, you've got a job to do now. <laughs> oh yeah. This one here, there's a lot of cables going on, okay? So my objective is to push this through and then I'm going to, gosh, I wish there was like an umbilical or something we could pass through here. I think I'm gonna paint to take the wing off, but you won't need to take the wing off. This plane's not right. big enough to need that. Now on the 90, we do have a quick disconnect on the wings, don't we? Oh goodness. Gosh, I can't remember now that I've said it's been that. a long time. Probably don't. Okay, do you guys see what I'm talking about? How it'd be nice to have an umbilical? Okay, so I'm just gonna lay this so it's gonna drop down eventually, okay? But I don't want that crap coming through like that. That's not acceptable. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to flip the plane over carefully doing this, because I don't have it really held together yet, okay? I'm gonna actually lay it down on the wing, which I normally don't do. Okay, I'm gonna set it just like this. I'm gonna come in here and just do a little bit more cable management. Why cable management now? Because I need it. Okay, I'm just gonna pull these wires up gently, very gently, very gently, trying to pull them through the opening Okay, it's hard to identify which one's which. I'm just kind of grabbing bundles. Bundles. Okay, oh yeah, there comes one. That's the gear that I'm pulling through. And I know you guys probably can't see very well, and I apologize for that. That's just kind of, I mean, I can barely see if that makes you feel better. And this is why it's so important to double check your 
control surfaces when you're done, okay? Now I'm gonna flip this back over, get that battery lead in, hold in the plane so the wing doesn't fall. We should be good. All right, so that was super ineffectual. Very, very useless move, Brian. That did not work with a dang. Okay, so I think you guys get the point on what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to force those down in a position that when I'm done, they're not going to be yanking themselves out of the quick disconnects because that would be um, potentially devastating. Okay, so you see I'm just wiggling. I'm getting there, it's all going in the hole now. Okay, give them a shot right here. You can see it's all in the hole, okay? Yeah, good. So let me tell you something, squeezing the limp things into a tight hole, it's a problem for the ages, guys. Okay, I pray that you don't have that problem. Okay, here it is, right there. Boom! Except it feels like I've got the bundle of joy is like maybe not Squish quite perfect. Still? Yeah, I'm in sideways still. Goodness gracious, I thought I had it. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna tell you guys, if you decide to shortchange this step, you may regret it because you might lose one of your plugs. So please, Seriously, that looked tedious because it was. But it's okay. I forgive them because this plane is awesome. Yeah. Screws. Tightening the screws. Look for pucker. Opposite corner this is my suggestion. This is not exactly an aluminum wheel, so it's not like you have to do it in this cross configuration. Look for pucker, good and tight. Did we get extra screws this time? There's four up here though, which is Oh, unusual. four in the front. Yeah. Well, that's weird. Okay. Very good. And we're almost done with this, guys. Very happy with the build, except for squeezing the limp noodle through the tight hole. Yeah. But you only have to do it once. And then it's done. I cannot say what I want to. I okay. have been, I have been encouraged mm -hmm. in a polite way, not to mention these things, on new releases. I by the authorita. Said nothing. Look at this. Look at this tightness here. I'm not sure if I like that. I might've gone a little bit too far. Too much? Yeah. Eh. Yeah, 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 I'm not sure. I think we're good there. Okay, so we have a bind plug also, and then we have an empty bag, guys. This plane is pretty much assembled, which is awesome because that was not too bad. And look, I got a free extension cable, amazing. Oh, thank you, Horizon. Okay. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> okay, this manual disgusts me. And that's one of my favorite parts of E-Flight planes because they have such good manuals. Because men love manuals and they read them. Right. But seriously though, they do have one of the best manuals yeah. in the realm of RC aircraft. And that's because they are consistent, concise, the opposite of me. <laughs> and generally accurate. We don't have a lot You're of typographical super errors. consistent, just not concise. Mm -hmm. See this? Now we have that giant bundle of crap down there and the ferrite core. Really? FCC? More like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't say that either. The FCC actually prevented me from saying it. <laughs> oh, goodness but it kind of like blocks all the wires. Can that be the positive? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> you win. All right, so now let's put some things away and we'll come right back. All right, so we're done cleaning up and we've got this battery lead that's just desperate to be plugged in, okay? And we have this 3200 6S. This is a Gen 1. You may be getting one that's a Gen 2 that just has this lead. You might get one that's a higher CPAC, but when we review these planes, we try to show a couple of different batteries if it's questionable which one you might go with. So in this case, we're also gonna have a 4050C and we'll see if we can squeeze it in, depending on how the CG works out. But they do recommend 3200 6S. 
Gen 2 is probably what I would recommend because you don't need the balance lead in this application. So this just adds to complexity that's unnecessary in this application, okay? So we did our shelf liner so I can put the sideways or I can take the shelf liner out and use that little strip of Velcro, which just annoys me. I never use the stupid Velcro on batteries. A lot of people do. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying I don't like it, okay? So this is a very high quality strap. It's the best kind, which is really good. So I like that a lot. I'm gonna slide this battery in. I'm not gonna overthink it, but I am gonna try to put this in so that it's just in basically here, okay? Now, I don't know how this is gonna center gravity out yet. I'm gonna test that in a few minutes, but I just want this battery ready to go so we can flip and maneuver the plane as needed, okay? Now, I'm gonna try to slide this strap down, you see? But I leave myself intentionally a mechanism by which to grab that. Now, I just wanna show you something about the shelf liner. You see your gap, it's about the finger thickness. It's not even tight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grunting, optional. Still have a finger depth, okay? Mm -hmm. So just to let you know, you don't have to use, by the way, if it's more of a smack down than that, that means you crashed. Yeah. And if you crash, the battery's gonna slip. Because I've had batteries that are Velcroed in come out. Okay, so we'll just lay this off to the side. By the way, a little worse for wear than some of our packs. The 4,000 um, 6S packs tend to go into uh, battery chewers. So I'm hoping this isn't a battery chewer. We'll find out. <laughs> Excuse you. Jeez, camera crew. <laughs> no. Yeah, whatever. We all heard it. <laughs> okay, so you guys see this? Round, not round. You're like, you're going to plug that in wrong? Yes. You know why? Because I want to make sure I can reach my lead. Okay? Yes, I will be able to reach. But also, this is a very convenient time to stick the canopy in. Now, we normally don't do, this programming cable's driving me nuts, so I want that stupid thing to go down in their, my cable management stuff. Okay? Looks pretty clean, guys. Okay, canopy. Push. Push. Yes! We got penetration. Good penetration. Okay, so amazing. Guys, this plane, I could have this plugged in and ready to go, except I haven't done radio setup yet, which we're gonna do right now, but I have to mark the CG first since we already are there. We might as well just mark it. Okay, center of gravity is listed inside the manual, of course. All right, where is it in the manual? Center of gravity, 80 to 90 millimeters behind the leading edge of at the wing root. Okay, 80 to 90. Mm -hmm. All right, so you take yourself some calipers, you open them up, lock them out. You want to probably make sure it's zeroed close enough, but I'm going to still zero it. Okay, so we'll go to 80. Good enough for what we're doing. Okay, so 80 to 90 millimeters at the wing root. So I'm going to come to this side. Sorry, camera crew. Now you guys have seen me do this. You've seen me do it many, many, many times. Now where exactly is the wing root? I'm gonna suggest that the wing root is actually where this wing attaches, but you may think it's here. Guess what? Five millimeters, not gonna be a deal breaker on this plane, okay? So I'm gonna just mark from there, okay? Then I'm gonna switch to the other side because it's easier for me. And then I'm gonna come from this side and mark about there, okay? And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go to 90, which is the 80 to 90 millimeters. You could also measure 10 from the first spot if you want. It's close enough for what we're doing. Now I'm gonna double check my measurements. I'm just eyeing, I'm taking my eye and I'm lining it up on the edge of that. And then I get my 10 millimeters of spread. Then I come over here and I get my body in front of it and I'm just lining up so I can see this tip. Why does that seem so much bigger? Did I bump it? No, I didn't bump it. Okay, I'm gonna use this tip now. Yeah, that, that's about right. Okay, so you see bump, 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 bump. Why do I do this? Why do I deface my planes? Brian, what are you doing defacing your plane? Well, I wanna be able to see it and I don't wanna have to wonder if I'm hitting it with my finger. There's already enough ambiguity in life and yes, I did just put holes in the plane with the tip of my felt tipped pen. Okay, now I can take, and if I am in any question, I can go to my 10 millimeters and I can measure, yeah, close enough. 
Yeah, close enough. Okay, so that means that any sort of disparity front to back <sighs> becomes somewhat subjective at this point. So we'll measure the center of gravity because we've already got the battery in there and you're like, Brian, you did this out of order. I'm so confused. It's okay. We'll do radio setup next just to show you how easy it is. Maybe. Okay. No, we will. <laughs> it's happening. It's on like Donkey Kong. Okay. So where do we do this? We put our middle finger on the back hole and the back hole with the battery where we expect it to be. Slightly nose heavy. We put it on the front hole, slightly tail heavy. So what does that tell you about any spot between those two? You're gonna be basically centered. Basically centered. Okay, good job, that's correct. All right, so now I can pop my canopy. Now that we know where we stick it, we can mark it. Why would you wanna mark where your battery goes? Because when you go to fly this plane in two weeks and you ask your wife, she won't remember what battery it is. Hey, honey, which battery does it take? I can't remember because my memory's not good. Like, you remember how I said it in the video? Like she knew in the first place. 3200 milliamp hour, 6S, okay? Now we size this with a 30C, but also I just want to point out something. You're not going to get a lot bigger with this. Okay. Yeah. See that? It's going to taper down to be basically flush with this line here and then this line here. Okay. So this will need to get pushed down flat when we actually go to fly this. Okay. All right. So as you can see, if that doesn't go, you need to, you need to help it forward. Now we had to do this to a plane the other day. And if you have one that does that to you, sometimes this is kind of a handy trick. Okay. I'm not saying you're gonna have to do this on yours. Remember, we have early samples. I'm gonna use the tips of my scissors this time. I'm just gonna ream the hole. I mean, I do ream the holes pretty nicely, guys. Look at this, right? Yeah, sometimes it just needs a little. A little extra TLC. Extra. Okay, so I just reamed them a little bit with that. Now, the other tool you can use that will generally work would be an X-Acto knife, but sometimes the X-Acto knife is a little bit too sharp. So it depends on how sharp your blade is. This blade's pretty sharp still, okay? So what you can do is you can take and just ream the hole like this. You see how it's getting that little tiny, it looks almost like soap. Okay, or I can take the back side of the blade and do the same. <laughs> clean your hole out. You always wanna have a clean hole before you stick anything in there. Just the end. New release. Okay. Put this canopy on. Oh, please, please don't make me look like an idiot. You did the last time I did this. See? Just like I said, it'll be perfect. You won't have to guide it. <laughs> won't have to do that. Won't have all. to do that at all. <laughs> Is your lead popped up just a little bit? Is that I why think, it's having a little bit of trouble? I think I'm probably hitting a little bit of this junk in here. So let's see if it goes better now. I hope it's not hitting the battery. And if it does, it's not the end of the world. Because honestly, I just want that forward. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we continue to have problems, then what I can do is I can shave that down a little bit, but I prefer to shave this. It's a lot easier to do. Mm -hmm. And also I don't have a huge problem with a little contact here. My guess is we're contacting right here. Okay. And so it's actually holding this whole apparatus up. It's pretty stiff actually. Okay. So I'm just thinking about once you're on your mains and you've got the spring loaded gear and it's kind of balanced on the, on the mains, it's going to want to tip back every time you do that. Okay. So the good news is we're ready for radio setup. Now, Radio setup on Brian Phillips RC is pretty straightforward. We talk about how to set up the radio. And if it's a plug and, plug and play airplane, it takes a little bit more effort. And so this thing is gonna be amazingly quick for you. And you'll be surprised when you see it. Also, I just wanna talk about how beautiful this plane is for two seconds. Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's easy to build. And yes, we are hitting the battery. Look, how do you know? We have a crack right here. Oh, it's more noticeable on this side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see that? And also I can tell it's pulling away the canopy edge here. Okay. Mm. So that's not so good. So again, early release product development samples. I can put a little bit of a formula. Is it 504, 504 I think or something like that? And that formula 504 is like a clear glue, or you can use China glue, China glue or foam to foam. Okay. Now, if you know for sure, this is where your battery is going to go and you're not worried about it, then what I would suggest you do is you put this in, you kind of mark it with your finger, and then you would just take and shave down just a little bit right here, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't like shaving down planes, but 
Let's just do it. I want. I don't want to pop the canopy. You know what I mean, Gene? Yeah, that's not good. We are using the right size battery, by the way, the recommended size. Okay, so this little bulge, we're gonna just uh, take it off. Don't cut yourself. I haven't done that for like a couple of days. Okay, <laughs> relax. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, guys, that blade is at a bad angle. Okay, watch this. Huge. I'm gonna show you a super secret trick. Okay, the super secret trick of the day. Yeah, this doesn't seem sketchy at all. No, it does. It does, that's the key. Okay. Now I can get my angle. Oh yeah. Ooh, not quite. I didn't, didn't lock it hard enough. Okay. More bad ideas from Brian Phillips RC. Different ways to hurt yourself. Let's see if this holds. Oh yeah, there we go. Remember, I'm just trying to barely shave anything off of there. See what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to get that angle. It really is. Yeah. Because the handle of the exacto knife is gonna take over. Okay. Well, that was a miserable fail, okay? So here on Brian Phillips RC, we're not afraid of miserably failing publicly. We do it all the time. Like, look at that tree. It's only been there for 35 years. Just jumped out in front of me. Well, I mean, like you haven't known that tree for 35 years. No, that's true. But I've known it for many, 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 many flights. Yeah. So I should know better. But that's okay. You still make mistakes. You've only hit it twice. It's not bending the way I was hoping it might. So guys, this angle is strangely obscene to cut. So I'm gonna just do two cuts. I'll do a cut that's shallow this direction. And then I'm gonna do a cut that's shallow this direction. Now remember, this is not gonna to need to win any awards. This is literally making clearance for a battery, okay? So guys, if you wanna submit that for that, what's that stupid Grammys thing they do on the YouTuberies? It's so dumb, like I don't, I don't even know what it is. What? Yeah, there's like a thing, it's like an award show. Oh, someone should totally nominate us. Nominate us? us? Yeah. If I got one nomination, absolutely. it would be awesome. Absolutely. Because I would not care at all. Okay, so you see this? Watch this. Rough sandpaper. Well, I seen Brian Phillips RC the way he does his sand, and he uses the bottom of his cabinets. Who's that? Worked. Just saying. There's still a gap. There is a Dang it, there is a gap. Son of a biscuit lover. Oh, is it the strap? How embarrassing would that be if the strap was a problem? That'd be awesome. You know, whatever. Okay, fine. There's a little bit of a gap. Yours probably isn't ha gonna have the gap. So radio setup in our case is going to be next. I'm not gonna cut any more material right. off of that because there's only so much thickness on that bottom, okay? Yeah. So if you take too much off the bottom of the canopy, you could regret it because you might eventually show through on the top. It's probably about, mm, let's call it three eighths of an inch. So six or seven millimeters of thickness is my guess. All right, so radio setup's pretty easy. We're gonna turn on our radio. I'm gonna show you how to do it all. Click back and cancel. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Add new model. This is an acro. We're gonna click create. Now, if you have like 200 plus models in your radio, it takes a while for this step. So don't think it's broken. It's, not. it's just taking its sweet time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have clicked create and uh, we, we're not going to pause. It's already, see, done. Right. just like I said. Just okay? tell, tell a story. So model select, model type's already done. If you change that at this point, it'll reset everything. Also, one annoying detail that does happen on a 10 channel system. If you made your model on an eight channel system, it's going to think it's still on an eight channel system or the same is true on a six channel or a mm -hmm. seven. Okay which is kind of frustrating, but you'll get over it by making a new model. Yeah. Okay, so continuing on, we gotta do a model name. It's not Acro, it is a Viper 70. We're gonna call this a V2, right? Is that what we're gonna do? Yeah, we're gonna have to denote it somehow. Because technically there's like, I think this is the third. They did some changes when they went from the 636 to the 631, and uh, then from the 631 now to this. So it's actually the third. We, third. Can, we can debate. We'll tell you what we come up with. Yeah. All right, so we're calling it the Viper 70 Orange V2, okay? All right, 
lots of beeping, then aircraft type. We'll set it to this. Oh, oh, by the way, oh, there is a spot in this manual. They've switched away from just the chart style, which was really good in my opinion, but people still had trouble. Okay. They have now a series of steps you can go through, okay? Now, we're gonna zoom out just a little bit so they can see if you've got the IX series, you've got the other ones. There you go. Okay. So this is what we're doing, okay? I'm just gonna walk you through it. It's easier to just build the model than it is to go find it on the website and download it. There are profiles you can download directly to your transmitter, provided you have the correct apparatus for Wi-Fi in your home or car or whatever it is, okay? I'm gonna tell you how I'm setting it up and then you guys can follow as much as you want. But I am gonna, when, when we get designations from eFlight, they're usually pretty good, okay? on the different mixing. So we'll just kind of look to where we want to do it. But you can just go straight down the list, okay? It's very simple stuff. That's where we happen to be, mm -hmm. look, okay? Right there. So basically then we can go to next, select image, standard file, and there should be like a Habu is the closest probably. Mm-hmm, probably. Oh man, that's one thing I wish we could get. And they probably have them, I just don't know where to look because I haven't gone after, ooh, that looks like the right tail. Huh, I'm gonna go with that. Just kind of, eh, whatever, that's lame. Let me see, you've never used that one. <clears throat> okay, so then, they're not saying to do flight modes? What? What are you talking about? I thought we did flight modes on these things. Maybe we don't hmm. need flight mode. What? But how are you gonna? How are you gonna do safe? safe? Whatever, forget it. I'm just doing it right. Nooner rat. Okay, so we have retracts, we have flaps, we have the future home of some other feature. This is gonna be switch D, the big D. Okay. Spoken flight mode. This is where we type in unnecessary labels that are just labels. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. And it's gonna say AS3X. We'll show you the first one because we did it kind of fast. AS3X mode. AS3X mode. Okay, then that one's gonna be. Well, I guess since we're using this one, we can do off. Off is way down here too, so we'll pause. Okay, we're using this one. We can do off. Off is way down here too, so we'll pause. Okay, off. Off, off, off. Got it. Oh. Okay, and then we're gonna go to flight mode three and I'm gonna do save. Smart mode, what the heck is that? Smart mode, that's not, you have to go past waypoints, you weren't there yet. I wasn't? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Past waypoints. There should be close, there you go. Now, I'm gonna type in the names, back, or cancel, cancel. And then I'm just gonna scroll in the words S-A-F-E, which stands for Sensor Assisted Flight Envelope. I used to say that wrong. Sensor Aided Flight Envelope, and it was like a big problem. And everybody screwed up their models for years because of it. Actually not, but still, it's Sensor Assisted Flight Envelope. Whoops. Like assist and aid, you know, a totally different meaning. Super different. Okay. And then we just move the switch. I know normally I type first, it's such a change of role reversal like you've never imagined on Brian Phillips RC because I don't like change. Yes, mm -hmm. unless it's a new airplane in my life and then I do like that. Which is kind of funny, if change for the better is good. Okay, yes, yeah, 3X. Okay, good, so we'll walk out of that. Remember, that's just a label. Okay, now something about channels. What are you talking about, camera crew? No, I was just saying, don't forget that there's a timer recommendation and then there's something about flaps when we get to that for setting up safe. Use so. the flap channel for safe select. Switch the values must be 100 and minus blah, 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 blah. blah. But we're not using the flap channel. No. So not. we don't need it, we don't need that. Yeah, I don't even know what they're talking about. Okay. We're gonna set up flight modes like we've always done and then hopefully we don't get burned. Okay, so this says NA, that's the flap channel, okay? This, I don't want associated to B, because I'm gonna use B for my flaps later. K 
Okay, walking out. First thing I like to do is I like to click. Don't be slow. There's your monitor. Click. I'm gonna go down to throttle cut. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna use switch each. Then I'm gonna look down here at this little thing. See how it's working? Ah, I accidentally set it to throttle. That would be an unusual way to do throttle cut. Okay, because I clicked and acknowledged it went white instead of black. Okay. See, it's not moving. That's what we want. Okay. Now when we have it unlocked, it's allowed to travel up and down. See down here? Up and down. Right? So now throttle cuts on and I bump it with my leg or my arm. It doesn't start. Okay. So if you had an appendage stuck up there, it wouldn't get cut off. Okay, dual rates and expo. I set mine to switch F, all of them. I'm gonna start with five, I'm gonna do 10, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do 20. And with that, I'm gonna reduce the rates to 90. Whoops. And I'm gonna replicate that on all three of the axis of control. So in this case, it's gonna be next elevator. So in the lowest setting of Expo, then in the middle setting where we're gonna start, and then a doubling effect if we don't have quite enough. Now when you land, you can set the new, say you ended here, you started there and you're like, I need more. Then you can set that to your new metal and then you can double it and half it. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. And if you're following along in your manual, You'll be doing this is this. where we deviate. We deviate a little bit, and we'll talk about the differences between what they're doing and what we're doing. Okay, so 20 and 90. Okay, so this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna take off here. If we need a little bit more sensitive sticks, we'll go up. If we want a little less sensitive sticks, we'll go down. Okay, but that gives you a get out of jail free card to get to the ground. Then you can make your changes on just the axis that was bothering you leave the other two the way they are, or if you needed multiples, okay? And they're all tied to one switch. You're like, but what if my elevator needs more expo, Brian? And yet my ailerons don't. You'll just have to land and change it, okay? But I don't wanna have three switches tied up for that. That's crazy, okay? Some people do that, fine. You're not crazy, it's just not the way I would do it, okay? Now, also speaking of, it's not the way I would do it. See this, they have rates, aileron, switch F, High rates, 100, Expo, 10%. Low rates, and I'm like, okay, so you have high rates and low rates? Like, what, what about the middle? There's three switches, okay? Mm -hmm. I like having less and more. Because guess what? When you're flying a plane, there's something really nice about being able to land it. Now, I'm not saying I haven't landed in a tree or on a house, but I have landed also on the ground and crashed. But the truth is, I wanna give you guys the best possibility of getting it to the ground, and then you're gonna fiddle with it a little bit. That's cool. But the thing is, this gets you to the ground uh, with the least chance of failure. Now, there's nothing wrong with the high and low rates, that's fine. But they're saying switch F for the ailerons and switch C for the elevator. And, and I'm like, what is that compared to the next model? Like, how are you gonna remember that C is that? And F is, you're not gonna ever remember that crap. I have done that same switch for like hundreds of planes. The only time we deviate is if we have retracts or not. Yeah. Because then sometimes I'll put safe over here because it's a little easier for me to get. I use thumbs. Admittedly, some of you guys are pincer grippers, which I like to make fun of that, but that's fine. A lot of you guys do that. I use my thumbs, okay? It's a video game thing, growing up with video games. I still think you should not do your safe on A when you don't have gear. Yeah, it's I know, because like, I accidentally turn it on when I take off. And yeah. I'm like, oh, it's like trees right there. Okay. Just be consistent. Whatever you do, be consistent. Okay. All right. So dual rates and expo, throttle cut set, um, flap system. We can go ahead and set that up on B. Now, this is where I'm going to listen to the manual because they've already worked out the details on it. So switch D. I'm not going to switch D. Why not D? because I just set that to my flight modes and I can reach B easy and I can't reach D easy, but I don't intend to go to safe, but I'm showing you, you how to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so remember, D is position zero is minus 100, okay. Just scroll it in, okay. Then position one is 25 minus, Okay, 
And then position two is 55 plus. Sounds like a wonderful retirement community. All right, then elevator to flaps, position zero. Uh, we're on position two now, so we'll do 11 here. Whoops. And guys, believe it or not, this screen is one of the biggest differences, position zero. Position 11 for both, really? Yeah, that's kind of strange. That's weird, but I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, because normally this is where they really shine on their setup. Okay, so two second deployment speed. I'm gonna tell you this, I've used other radio systems, and this is one of the menus that, at least in my personal experience, I miss bad when I get out of the spectrum stuff. Because having a, a link between flaps and elevator that is delayed is so nice. It is like one of the biggest features. And also if you set up Crow on one of these modern receivers, it's so easy. Used to be a pain in the neck, now it's pretty easy, okay? Continuing on. Okay, so we got the speed at two seconds. So if you ever wanna simulate this, by the way, as you're working, you can just deploy the flaps and you can see the flap. See it moving? And you can see the speed. And then you can look over here at the elevator. See, move to 11. Pretty cool, right? And you also notice auxiliary two is not changing, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. So an auxiliary three is up here on the knob. We don't need it. Auxiliary four and five are my sliders. We're not actually gonna use those for anything. But if you don't like the incessant beeping, you can disassociate those from controlling aux four and aux five. And you won't hear that beeping when you accidentally bump the sliders, okay? I have yet to use my sliders for anything, but they are handy if you have an additional axis of control. All right, so continuing on with radio setup, we're pretty dang close, timer. Timer, set the flight for three minutes and 30 seconds. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but Brian, you have telemetry. Yeah, I'm still gonna set the timer. It does technically say 340. 340? Mm-hmm. See? I mean, it's 10 seconds, but. Okay, good enough for me. You're gonna ignore it anyway. Voice at one minute, nothing at 20. At 10 seconds, I want a voice countdown. And at expiration, I would like a tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. Okay, so that gives us all of the functions that we need with the exception of potentially rotating or reversing. Do we need to reverse anything? It says on here, if you do, I don't, I don't see it anywhere. So they must not have to reverse our channels for the gear, for instance. I wanna make sure my gear are up here and my gear are down there. Also, we need to set up um, the thrust reverse stuff but we'll just get it bound first and then we'll do that together because I don't see it on here. No, I don't either. Yeah, they don't have thrust reverse on here either. Okay guys, so one thing that's lacking in these manuals at times is the features of consistency. And E-Flight e is one of the best about giving you the important information and then there's gonna be some additional things that they worked out um, that they like. But I'm gonna be honest with you, dual rates and expo, is a completely subjective matter. If you just need a good starting point, do it from the manual, you're fine. But if you want a good starting point, you can do it the way I do it. We've done hundreds of planes, had good success with most of them. Um, not every plane, we've had some planes where we've had issues, but it's because of a lack of experience and skill in my arena, okay? So we have this plane leveled out. This is usually the way I like to start them when I'm doing the binding process, okay? So now I can walk out of the menu, just be prepared. Okay, so I'm gonna be in here, click, and I'm gonna scroll down to bind. I'm gonna leave this screen up. It's gonna time out, as it always does, and it drives me nuts. I am gonna energize the plane. This is the EDF. It's pretty safe to play with these EDFs. Okay, now I'm gonna press this button, and right on cue, it timed out. You can see the flashy light. Waiting for the binding sequence. Bind, yes, bind, binding. Watching the dance, careful of your gear coming down because I would be obstructing the gear at the moment, but because of the ventral fins, I can't get all the way forward unless I readjust this, which I'm not going to do, okay? So I'm gonna now take this and set it like that. Why am I setting it like that? So that I don't have to worry about the gear deploying on accident because that would kind of ruin your day. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, but Brian, why did you just turn the plane? Like you don't need to turn the plane. Yes, I do. 
because I want to make this as obvious as possible. Battery lead goes in there nicely now. Really works good. Well, that oh, went on. Good. Really fine. Okay. All right. Might have been just some sponginess about the way it's sitting on our carriage here. Okay. So now, just to talk about everything we need to talk about, first things first, elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right, y'all left, y'all right. Take off flaps and landing flaps. Looks pretty good. I, eh, that's fine. I feel like I would probably do a little bit more, a little less on that, but that's fine. I'll leave it as stock for now. The reason I'm leaving it as stock is out of respect for you guys that are making a decision to buy this or not based on our video. We'll make adjustments in the field if we need to. It's like takes 10 seconds. Okay, now I am going slightly uphill, so it'd be nice to maybe keep this level while we do our first time setups on everything, but I don't think we have to do that because this is bind and fly, okay? So I want to figure out if the gear work and how they work and how they look. So let's go ahead and cycle the gear. Okay, so they are in reverse orientation. First things first. Oh yeah, look at that. That is the squishiest awesomeness that I've ever seen. Really squishy. That is really squishy. Look, they look identical to the original ones, but they're squishy and spring-loaded, baby. Woo-wee. Guys, you don't understand just how amazing this combo is because the competitive offering with the spring-loaded made a big difference, but not enough. And by the way, that big monster over there that 2.0 meter beautiful carbon Z T28 has the smallest deviation from the rock hard stock tires to the soft tires. Huge difference, huge. Okay, this is gonna be a lot better like that. So thank you Horizon for doing that. All right, so now let's talk about everything else. We have steerable going in the right direction, All right? I don't like the retracts the way they are, so I'm gonna change that by clicking, going to servo setup. I'm gonna go travel over to reverse and I'm gonna switch gear. Now the gear are down so that it doesn't try to retract them, but you'll notice it didn't retract or extend the gear based on the switch condition until I switched it. That's not uncommon. A lot of times gear will wait for the first input to make a change of state. But not always. And the time you don't expect it, your plane's gonna go It's gonna try to lift itself off of its belly. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead, and by the way, this radio setup is almost done. This is just a few minutes of radio setup. Oh, I love that. I love that. Guys, watch this. Oh, yes. Huge, huge protection for this plane. Very happy with that. I normally don't drop my planes on purpose like that, but I did it on purpose because you guys need to know. Just listen to it. It like sounds, it sounds squishy. I love it. Do you feel it? Look at that. I can hear it. It's gonna create a little more resistance on takeoff, but that's okay, I'm with it. I'm all about it. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna walk out of the menu now. Throttle cuts on and tested. Now I'm gonna secure the plane. I'm gonna give some throttle. Oh yeah, that is, uh, by the way, 24%. Wow. It feels like as powerful as some planes when they're flying. Okay, throttle cuts on again and tested. So now that we have established that we had forward thrust, we can go ahead and figure out reverse thrust. So how do we figure out reverse thrust? We scroll way over here and we enter setup. Now it's not gonna work, so I'll just show you. Low throttle, up elevator, and then left aileron. This is not gonna work, just so you know, and we're gonna show why it doesn't work. And you're like, for five to 10 seconds? Come on, man. It's not gonna work because it has to happen within the first few seconds of power cycle, okay? So we're gonna do that. Pop the canopy. Unplug, replug. Okay, I like to do this relatively quick so we don't have an issue. Wait for that to change. Okay, now we can sit back down and be comfortable while we do this. Okay, so here's the next move. Use this stick to move. Use this stick. Uh, so elevator up and down moves you up and down. Fixed wing, brake type, normal, proportional, reverse. Brake force, eh, I don't know, they didn't tell us. 
you're supposed to set something to not zero is what you're supposed to, like six or five or something. All right, just leave it off. You're not supposed to do that. Okay, so channel seven, let's talk about channels. We have channel seven would be fine, except are we using that? Because we have retracts. So we have um, throttle, and not in any particular order, throttle, elevator, rudder, ailerons, flaps, or gear, <sighs> thrust reverse, five, six, seven. So we could do channel seven. But then channel eight, nine, and 10 are still available for that receiver, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, except I think we only have access to eight and nine, or Time remaining. One minute. seven and eight. Whatever, we'll just leave it as channel seven. But if you wanted to change that, you would just move like that, okay? Channel eight would be more customary. Will you have master gain on this? No. <clears throat> Probably not as a bind and fly. Right, so, so seven would be fine. Except I don't know where safe's gonna go. I think channel eight, we normally ride into the higher channels if we can, C9, five is the lowest you can do, okay? And that's with the current firmware on that. So channel nine would be nice because you'd be way up there in the unusable range because it's not pluggable then. But so is seven because it's only six channels. Yeah, right. So let's say, I wanna do eight. I have reasons for it, we'll talk about it in a minute. So channel eight, exit with save, everything boots. Throttle cut's still on. We don't want to mess with anything yet. Okay, so I'm going to scroll all the way back over to the normal screen. I'm going to clear my timer because I don't want to listen to her talk. Okay, so everything's good there. Everything's good there. Okay, now in monitor mode, you can see that aux three, which is channel eight, is going to now be in charge of thrust reverse. It's not set correctly. So I'm going to scroll down to system setup. I'm going to disconnect RF and I'm going to go to channel assign. Then I'm going to go from this, and I'm going to go right knob, I'm going to change it to switch G. G is going to be where we control our thrust reverse. This being forward thrust, this being reverse thrust, this being pilot fatigue. We'll talk about pilot fatigue in a minute. Pilot fatigue is going to deploy full thrust reverse, and we'll show you how to do it. But first, we got to get thrust reverse set up. Now, thrust reverse needs to be assigned by going to digital switch setup. Select, go to switch G. Now. In order to test this, we have to be in a position. This is in fact moving from minus 100, zero to plus 100. I can tell you right now that's gonna be reverse thrust, which is in the wrong position, okay? So you can either switch the direction or you can lock these all in the position you want, which is what we're gonna do. So this should be forward thrust, okay? So I'm gonna shut off my throttle cut. Definitely blowing at me, you guys can probably see and hear it, okay? Now I let that down. Now I'm gonna go to the opposite condition and watch the bananas. And take it out. Thrust reverse screen is by the way, you have tinnitus. Throttle cuts on. Now that you understand what I'm saying, <clears throat> this position we want to be minus 100. Okay, so now we have forward thrust, whoops. We have forward thrust in the forward position. Now on this position, I want plus 100, which is gonna put us into reverse thrust, but it's gonna be controllable. And this one is going to also be, you have to scroll all the way through. This one's also gonna be reverse thrust, but we're gonna add a mix to the throttle that's tied to switch G, okay? So reverse thrust, reverse thrust, forward thrust. Okay, I'm gonna walk out of the menu, throttle cuts off. I'm gonna test my, I'm all the way forward, all the way forward. Might wanna put the camera here so they can see. All the way forward. Okay, holding. Forward thrust. Now, reverse thrust. And still reverse thrust until such a time as we go down. Throttle cuts on. We're safe to test, okay? We're gonna to continue to mix in what's called, what I like to call pilot fatigue. Pilot fatigue has to do with, uh, in real life, that's just a nickname we gave this feature, okay? It's a feature that I didn't come up with necessarily, reverse thrust with full throttle. Okay, some people will tie to switch I, and they will press and hold that to slow down with thrust reverse. That's fine. Then you can just bump the button and it will go full thrust reverse. I don't 
suggest doing pilot fatigue on prop driven planes because you can cut yourself so easy with it. And I do only suggest it on EDF planes because it just makes better sense, okay? So do this at your own risk. This isn't from the manufacturer by any means. Oh, excuse me. Mixing. So we're gonna mix a normal, the input is gonna be switch G, or excuse me, it's gonna be active um, on switch G, okay? So switch G, ah, dang it, switch G. It's only gonna be active when we're in the full thrust reverse pilot fatigue. So I wanna scroll over to this. What the heck? Why is it not letting me get down to those switches? You see that? Okay, so I'm clicking in. That is so weird. That should allow me to go in there. Is it because you haven't set what your mix parameters oh, are? Oh yeah, that matter? Yeah, that's probably what it is. Okay, so I'm trying to remember if we do throttle to throttle. Yeah, I think we'll just do throttle to throttle. Or we can just, actually we'll just do switch G. Because G is gonna be moved into a position, okay? And then it's all tied to the same thing. So it's, it's just easier for people to understand that. Okay, so G to throttle. That's only gonna happen, yeah, you're right, hon. This is gonna cancel out, this is gonna cancel out, meaning the mix is only going to be allowed to happen upon that condition, okay? So we can see what that condition is because aux three is right there, okay? So it's minus 100 and there's no mix. Plus 100 and there's no mix. But in this mix, we're gonna have an output that's gonna be tied to 100. So the rate should be one or the other, I can't ever tell which one. And I gotta turn off throttle cut and it's gonna be either this way, it's not, or that way, clear, click. See, it's starting up. Throttle cut still works. Okay, so throttle cut's on now. I'm gonna set this to 100. Okay, this is gonna be kinda of loud, so here we go. I'm out of my mix. Show them this. I'm out of my mix. Nothing is mixed. Nothing is mixed. Now full throttle in reverse thrust is mixed, okay? So throttle cuts off. We have a little bit of forward thrust. Reversing. Pilot fatigue. And off, back to controllable, okay? Sticks down. All right, so if you decide to mess with that, you put your throttle cut on first, then you move back to the position you wanna mess with. And then let's see if we can change this beyond 100. Throttle cuts off. Throttle cuts on. So we're gonna go to 125. All right guys, that makes sense. Now there's another way you get even more. Throttle cut is on. cuts on. Oh, that set off the tinnitus for sure. Okay, now I'm out of that control mode. So let's go back to monitor mode and you can see what's going to happen. We have thrust forward, normal flight, thrust reverse, back up to the runway, control it, and then you're coming in for landing, touchdown, boom! Throttle cuts on. That's loud. Ow. Seriously, my left ear is ringing. Okay, so just so you know, that offset and everything is probably overdoing it a little bit, but that's sweet. So I'm gonna overdo the heck out of it. And really when you get right down to it, the other thing is when you're out there on the tarmac and you accidentally turn on thrust reverse and your plane goes backward and you look like an idiot, you can think of me. But that's gonna be awesome though, because boy, those soft gear make a huge difference, guys. I am so happy with those soft gear. Now there's no excuses, Horizon, for any other planes to have not soft tires ever. Five million of those. Ever. <laughs> okay, so that being said, there is one more setting to look at and it's gonna be safe. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to forward programming. Just respect your throttle cut, respect your switches to make sure you're set. And thrust reverse really doesn't cause you any problems, okay? Forward programming. Gyro settings with advanced menus. You can turn that on. Oh, that's so cool. So you can get in and do all the stuff now. So gyro settings, AS3X settings, AS3X gains, 
See, that's the default settings, guys. Mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah. sweet. Okay, so we need to set aux two is not correct. Remember? Well, wait, is it correct? Which what we set the switch D? We didn't make a I setting. I don't know if we made an assignment. Oh, so if we didn't make an assignment, let's walk out, walk out of the menu, scroll over one to the monitor. Nothing's changing, guys. We didn't actually tell it to attach to any of these. So we have this channel, auxiliary one used. We have aux three shut off, which is what we want. We have thrust reverse on aux three, so aux two is free. So I'm gonna click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, acknowledge that, scroll down to channel assign, and then for aux two, I'm gonna make an assignment to switch D. You can also assign that to flight mode as well. And I'm trying to remember where that is. FN, that's actually the FN button. Oh, see F mode. So you can do it that way, or you can just assign it to the switch. I think F mode's better because you can actually have a matrix of two switches or three that control flight mode. So what I've always done is switch D, okay? Walk out, click, scroll down to forward programming. Gyro settings, safe select, aux two, okay. Oh, there's only two modes. I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, safe. Is AS3X is on? Okay. Okay, so you'll notice that that's backward. That says on while my switch is up. So how do we fix that? The easy way, oh, don't you worry about that. Don't you know? Servo setup, travel, scroll over to reverse and then reverse aux two. Now you can also go to digital switch setup and change that, but I'm gonna just do it the easy way there. And then we're going back into forward programming, gyro settings, save select. Now it's off. Safe mode. Off. AS3X mode. You guys hear it? It's saying it correctly now. I don't know if they can hear this. Off. You need to show the screen. Safe mode. Off. AS3X mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've added a feature that you probably didn't need. The off mode. Okay, back here. Okay, cancel out AS3X settings. AS3X gains are currently set off. per mode. Safe mode. Off. AS3X mode. If this ever happens, just click, go back into forward programming. Don't freak out, it's not a big deal. So evidently it diverts to safe for that setting. Now also the other settings here, well, you can initiate the receiver bind mode in here. That's weird. Frame rate, factory reset. That's what you want if you wanna go back to full factory reset. And then you can set up all sorts of crazy things that will confuse the heck out of you. If you're brand new pilot, don't do that please, okay? Okay, so we have all the controls. This is, this is when we test everything, okay? We've already tested the throttle cut. It's good, throttle cut's off. Forward thrust, controllable reverse thrust, and then pouncy, I don't wanna have it on for long. Okay, throttle cut's now on. We know that's all working. Throttle stick is back down to its neutral position, or to zero. Y'all left, y'all right. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, take off flaps, landing flaps. Looking for correction, you can see it's very subtle. Should go to 11 and stay there, it does. Very good. Okay, so we have all the control directions going in the right direction as I am controlling it. Now let's see if safe and AS3X does it. We've already given some throttle, I don't know if I exceeded. Oh yeah, it's working. It's quiet though. I'm gonna put the gear up for this. 
Oh, that's so cool. Okay, guys, come here. It's barely moving. Here's how I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna put my hand on it and I'm gonna go up. Yep, at push down. I'm gonna go down and push down. It's very subtle. Okay, same thing here. Up, down. I have to hold right here. Up, down. What do I want? When I lift this wing, I want that to go up. I want that to go down when I push the wing down. Okay, so slowly, you don't feel it. Fast, it goes down. Fast, it goes up. I can feel it, but I'm putting my finger. Come up here close, please. I'm putting my finger against this joint. You can do here, but it's a little bit more movable. Okay, so up, down. I feel it, you can't see it. I can't turn the master gains up to exemplify this to you. Elevator, up. I can't feel it, so I have to put my hand on this joint. Up, down. And when I say up and down, I just mean the direction that the plane is moving, okay? I'm gonna put my finger here, up, down, good. It's going the direction opposite the movement of the aircraft. So right here, this should go up when I, when I, when I rotate the plane. Up, yes. Down, can't really feel it. Let's try it this way. Can't really feel it. <laughs> it's not doing much. Okay, down, that went up. Okay, so I can feel all those. Now the rudder, you can see. So I'll switch for a second. Okay, so look really close. Going this way, you see how it points to that direction, and then going this way, it points to that direction. Okay, then this way, it points to that direction. Now, I'll see if I can show you really close up of the aileron. Rolling up, rolling down. It's super subtle, but you can see it. Okay, rolling, and then rolling. You guys see how it's resisting the upward, resisting the downward. Okay, and I don't look like a complete fool at all doing that. Not a bit. So the good news, they all correct in the right direction. So now, the next thing we need to do, awesome. The next thing we need to do is check safe. And you're like, how are you gonna check safe? There's three basic ways to do it. One, you can flip the plane, well, two ways. Let me show you the first. Sticks down and out, off, no change. Safe will reduce the amount of output, okay? Now you can tell also, by flipping the plane on its back, it's gonna find the quickest route to level. Okay, when safe is off, it won't do that. When AS3X is off, it also won't do that, okay? Now, safe being on, you can also test for the limits of the bank angles by holding the stick to the direction you wanna roll. And then when you get there, that's how much it's gonna let us bank. You're gonna have to go back. You see the aileron? That stopped moving, so that means that's as far as it's gonna let us drive it. Now, going the other way, same thing. Now, elevator, pulling up on the elevator, it's gonna let us go about there, and then pushing down on the elevator, it's gonna let us go about like that, okay? So that's a test you can do that you don't have to do, but my suggestion is, the more you know about the way this plane works, when you get ready to maiden, the better experience you're gonna have, okay? If you don't double, triple, double, triple, quadruple check your surfaces, you have a high probability of failure. So please do that. Okay, I'm back in AS3X. Roll, roll, elevator, elevator, yaw, yaw. Everything's tested, guys. This thing is ready to fly, and it's ready to fly with amazing performance. Features like thrust reverse, soft tires, spring-loaded oleos, trailing link nose gear, Beautiful new high visibility paint job, white versus gray, which helps with visibility in most, I hate to break it, autumn skies, which sucks, because it's gonna start getting all cloudy and crappy around here, and I'm gonna have to fly in that, and I just want it to stay summer all the time, like it does in places like California, but there's some drawbacks there too, I think. So also, I gotta say, if you haven't experienced this Viper Jet, you gotta get one. And if you're gonna get one, and we helped even a little teeny bit, please seriously do me a favor, a personal favor, because I got four kids to feed, I got myself, which is like about as much as the four kids eat, and then my wife, um, who's very good about that stuff. But at the end of the day, you will be supporting me and the camera crew and our entire family and our way of life and this RC uh, fanatic that you see in front of you right now 
all the different exploits that we're trying to do to our property so that we can do some amazing and cool footage for you. But when you see something like this and you want it, just buy it from our links. That's the number one way you can support our Brian Phillips RC YouTube channel. Now, if you just can't buy it from the links and you want to support us, there's four other ways. Super thanks, one-time donations through YouTube. They also have YouTube membership where you can be a monthly supporter. Thanks if you're one of those, by the way. We have a handful of you. I think it's like nine now or something, yeah, yeah. which is super cool. And then we also have a PayPal if you, or you know, just like a one-time gift or Patreon, which would be a monthly support similar to YouTube memberships. The only difference is we don't list advantages, but there is a bit of an advantage. We just kind of like keep it on the down low. And that would be that we get comments there quicker and I have a better opportunity to see them because I think we have about like 39 or 40 people mm -hmm. that are supporting us monthly. So again, it's not some like huge windfall profit for us. Really what it does is it helps to get us covered for some of the time that we put into this. And we pretty much turn around and spend it back into the hobby, um, which it's, I mean, some might debate about that because of the planes. We just love the planes. That's our number one thing. We also do helicopters, quads, VTOLs, leaf blowers, weed whackers. Cars. Cars. Oh yeah, cars and trucks too. We do lots of ground vehicles, a lot more than we used to. And to be honest with you, I love fixed wing planes. It's the most exciting, um, it's the most inclusive experience. It gets all your senses involved. And I feel like it's the closest simulation to reality that you can have. Because as a person watching an airplane fly, it's just like watching a real plane fly. The difference is you're in command and control of it. So if you're a control freak, you'll love flying radio controlled airplanes. But I must say, in aviation, aviation starts somewhere for everybody. Your love for aviation might have been watching Top Gun 1 or Top Gun 2 or some amazing movie like that as a kid, okay? For me, I love watching Top Gun as a kid. And it helped to uh, inspire me to want to be involved with aviation. And I did tons of stuff with aviation as a kid, going to air shows, watching F-18s and F-16s and F-14s. I actually saw F-14s fly, which is crazy. It's one of the loudest planes I've ever heard in my life. We've seen B-1 bombers, B-2 bombers, F-22s, I mean, it's just, yeah, I could go forever. F-35s, we've seen a lot of these big, huge bombers, the B-52s, and it's just amazing. We love this stuff. But even as an adult, I find myself being a kid again when it comes to aviation stuff like that. Now, because I want to pursue full-scale aviation on one level or another, we're already doing PPG, I'd like to do ultralights and then eventually have a full-scale airstrip right there, it's dark right now, but it's gonna literally be right there on the other side of the pond. We want you guys to understand that when you support us by buying planes like this, or transmitters like that, or the battery that's in here, or the receiver that's in here, whatever it is, whether it's a charger, battery, airplane, or a combination they're in, you are helping us to achieve those goals, which you're gonna be able to then enjoy on the Brian Phillips RC platform. Okay, so it helps us also to build our relationships with the companies that we work with. Now, when we work with these companies, obviously we make small commissions on the sales and we never wanna lie about any of that stuff. But we are bent to serving you and not so much serving these guys, okay? Because our objective is to, of course, point out the things that they're interested in, the things that they invested in to bring a better product to market, but it's not like I'm not gonna mention that there aren't LEDs on this because there are not LEDs on this. Would I like to see LEDs? Do I think it's appropriate on this cost point? Yeah, but you know what? The competitive offerings also don't have LEDs. If you wanna add LEDs, we've been adding LEDs for years and we have tons of footage. I can think of one off the top of my head. The, I don't know why I think of the Spitfire 1.2. Oh, really? It's not even, you can't even get it right now. I hope they re-release that by the way, because that'd be awesome with the new the AS3X just works better on these than the Gen 1s did. The 636 was never as good as the 631, in my opinion. 630, 631, AS3X is better tuned. I hate to break it. So that being said, guys, so much, so many different good ways, or as my son would say, so much good ways. Our younger son, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> so much good ways to support us on Brian Phillips RC, not the least of which is watching the videos, liking the videos, 
clicking the bell for notifications when subscribing so that you know about the new content that's coming out. We do a lot of new content on Brian Phillips RC to the tune of two to five videos per week. And that is daunting for the camera crew. She does not love aviation like I do. She tolerates it because she loves me. So if for nothing else, you decide to support Brian Phillips RC by buying an airplane, you're, you're actually supporting Megan. Uh, who puts up with this crap. I love this crap, okay? So she puts up with it. And as you can see, she puts up with a lot of it. This is just the living room in the house. You'll notice that there's probably more aircraft in this one room than many people will have in an entire RC career, and that's not even the basement. Hi. And you haven't seen the closet in there, and that office has probably another 30 planes. And then there's probably 400 downstairs. I love these things. It is addictive to me. Now, is that unusual to end up with 400 planes? Probably a little bit on the extreme end, but there's people with more, I know there are. Um, but at the end of the day, the reason that that's good for you is because I can say, I have flown this, and I have flown the competitive offering, and I have flown the previous version, and I can tell you they're all good, or they're all garbage, or they all suck, or they're all great. But at the end of the day, we try to serve you in the, in the community because we know that you guys are all out there busting your butts, trying to make enough money to pay rent or to pay your mortgage or to pay for your new car payment or whatever, your kid's medical operation, uh, you know, whatever it is that you guys have going on in your lives and it's real. But at the end of the day, if you're gonna be buying these anyway, it's very easy for you to help support us by buying them through the links. Plus then that gets us an attaboy from the company and the company knows, hey, when we send stuff to Brian, He's reaching our core audience, the type of audience that's interested in buying these airplanes. Whether it's this Viper, maybe you've already got the last Viper and you're totally satisfied with it. We understand. Or maybe you just spent your budget on this beautiful SR-22, or excuse me, the SR-71. I don't know why. I always talk about the serious one. I'm talking about this uh, SR-71 nowadays. Um, but regardless of what your rationale is, we really appreciate you being here and being supportive of Brian Phillips RC as we go through this. Also, our website has been much improved over the years because Megan does all of it. And so if you go over there and you find something you like, give her an attaboy in the comments below. It is always passed along either from me to her or she's reading it herself and she might even reply once in a while, which is unusual, but she does. So that being said, as we have gotten bigger in our YouTube growth, it's been harder and harder to keep up on comments. So again, Patreon does give you that small in so that I just know that the comments are coming through. It's hard for me to go through and spend two or three days doing comments when we're doing two to five videos a week. But we still try. And I do almost every day, seven days a week, I'm in there doing comments. So if you don't get a response to your comments, I apologize, we don't mean to leave anybody out. We love interacting with you. And by the way, we're gonna be at Bigfoot in October. What are the dates for that? October 19th through the 22nd. Yep. Oh, my mic is dead, so you have to say it again. October 19th through the 22nd of 2023, we'll be at Bigfoot in Birmingham, Alabama, yep. doing some fun stuff. So it's super cool if you guys are brand new to the hobby and you're just catching onto this channel or maybe you've been into this channel for a few years and you wanna meet us, we'll be there. We were at RC Fest earlier this year, helping to celebrate some of Horizon's achievements, which is super fun. And we were also at Joe Knoll doing the same and with other vendors that we work with. So super fun, and by the way, if you ever get a chance to go to Joe Knoll, it's amazing. Knoll in the fall should be coming up this year. I don't know when it is, but we- two weeks. Two weeks. It's at the end of September, so I don't yeah. know when they're gonna see But we it. aren't gonna be at the Knoll in the fall this year. I, I'm out of vacation days. So yeah. I work a day job, if you guys don't know that, I work on industrial scales for a living. I'm a technician, I've been doing that for almost two decades. I'm good at that job. And um, I enjoy doing it, I do a lot of teaching of technical things. So if you think I am technically minded, that's because I do that for a living. And I always have been. So since I was a kid, I love this stuff. So that being said, now you know a little bit more about Brian Phillips RC, and you know that this is gonna be an amazing Viper. So we hope that you will get one because we think that you deserve it. And just remember, snakes in the basement. If your wife doesn't want you to get this Viper, just let her know about those snakes so that when you get your delivery, you can go and put it down in the basement quickly before she notices. Also, soft tires, major kudos to E-Flight for giving us actual, genuine soft tires. These things are gonna be a huge improvement. 
because the Viper, the original Viper did like to bounce on it because they had spring-loaded basic bent spring landing gear. Look at the landing gear now, guys. I don't know if we've talked about this much, but those spring-loaded oleos are just awesome. And then on top of that, having a softer tire, I mean, just like watch, it dampens the bounce. That is so huge. And I can't wait to fly it, but it's a little bit dark right now. All right, guys, that's all you get for tonight. We appreciate you being here with us, and we know that you're gonna come back because we have so much more coming on Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching.